Haynes and Orr turn the tables with huge opening stand. Chris Cook and Shubman Gill both played their way to hundreds for Glamorgan on day two in Hove, as the visitors racked up 533 in their first innings for the loss of just nine. Sussex had started with intent, but not without damage, the score 88 for one from the first 14 overs. But Glamorgan got off to a great start with the ball, Tom Alsop out edging behind for four. Tom Haynes responded, first by pushing van der Hoekten back down the ground for four to bring up the hundred, and then sealing a 50 with a single off Hogan, the captain batting in determined fashion early in the day. But Clark went to call behind for 11, a third for Glamorgan. Ibrahim followed, bowled by Harris for 10, with 150 on the board, and Ashraf could offer little resistance, loving one through to Cook for four. Hudson Prentice lifted one straight back to Patel to leave Sussex six down. Charlie Tier and Tom Haynes stopped the rot and had Sussex moving again. The new batter fired Salter away for four to move them to 200 and repeated the shot to Patel to bring up the 50 partnership from 67 balls. When they headed off for lunch, Sussex were 315 behind, with just four wickets in hand. Haynes and Tier continued to counter-attack, rebuilding the innings, and the approach took the captain to his 100, scored from 150 balls. Tier was raising the bat too soon enough, 50 up from 75 balls, as they ran three off Hogan. He would eventually fall LBW to van der Hoekten for 56. Sussex brought back down to earth with a bump. He shattered, just like Carson's stumps were to the very next ball. Hunt two would go without scoring, LBW to Vettel to leave the hosts down to their final wicket, still 280 behind. They'd only had five more before the innings was at an end. Curry, LBW to Van der Hoekten, Sussex all out for 258 and 275 in arrears. Tom Haynes had done ever so well to grind out his hundred, but he could do little to stop the wickets tumbling around him. Tier and Orr offered some resistance, the other seven batters added 31 combined. Harris and Van der Hoekten had each taken three for 58 and 56 respectively. As they had in the first innings, Sussex came flying out of the starting blocks, the opening partnership attacking anything and everything they could lay their backs on. It took them just 47 balls to reach 50, a confidence-boosting start for the hosts. Or launched Patel over the leg side for six to close in on a half century, and he brought it up with another maximum, this one bigger than the first. 50 runs had come from just 41 balls for the opener, and Sussex were up to 88 for none at tee, trailing now by 187. And they were just as effective after the break, the partnership responding positively to the pressure enforced by Glamorgan. Up to 100 with a six crunched down the ground by Orr. He did it again, this time to Patel, the Sussex opener, racing towards three figures. It was a sparkling innings from the 21-year-old, the century sealed of just 82 balls, featuring nine fours and five sixes. The Glamorgan lead was dwindling, the pair going at a runner ball and sweeping their way past 200 with ease, or with another six off Mattel. He wouldn't stop, adding two more before the end of the over. The intent was there again, but the placement was two, or up to 150, from just 123 balls when he picked up a single. For the second time in the day, Haynes raised the bat, his second hundred in just a few hours sealed as he fired Salter away for four. Orr's assault never stopped, Sussex leading now, heading towards the end of the day, both men showing sublime touch as they moved the score beyond 300. The punishing day for Glamorgan came to an end with Sussex leading by 37. The score were quite remarkable, 312 for none. Quite the turnaround from Sussex, but he had to feel for the visitors. Glamorgan's promotion hopes virtually ended, thanks to Middlesex's strong showing away at Worcestershire. And their bowlers were torn apart by a rampant, eye-catching and spectacular opening stand from Tom Haynes and Ali Orr.